All right. So today I'm welcoming Beirut to the podcast. And I'm so happy and honored to have him on. I met him uh, a, a few months ago. He was leading a 90 day challenge, and I got to be part of that experience. It was really wonderful. And I actually met some great entrepreneurs. And I'd like to read a little bit about your background, and then you can expand upon that. Any other additional information? that you would like to share with us. Uh, Dr. Beruz, AKA the Entrepreneur's Doctor, helps entrepreneurs create a healthier, happier world. So needed. He is a Harvard, Oxford, and UC, CDC trained public health and preventive medicine physician. Uh, chief medical officer to startups and scallops and the creator of the intelligence incubator and startup Therapy Accelerator, the world's first accelerator with the mission of democratizing health in health entrrepreneurship, which is amazing. All that is just amazing and a lot. I'm hearing <laughs> that gentle. back now and I'm thinking, OK, that, I need to change that. Don't I? I mean, so <laughs> No, but you like you got to own all that. Like, I mean, oh what would you God. cut out? That's all important. <laughs> Uh, we'll attach my resume next. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Nice to see you, Alison. Honestly, I love that. <laughs> so tell us, tell us a bit about your journey and what you're doing, and how it led to the work that you're doing now. Because all of this is so important work, and now is the time, right? Alison, look, honestly, thanks so much for inviting me on. Uh, you were a star. We'll talk about the, the challenge in a moment, but you saved That's my it. life, literally, because I went into that challenge and I was thinking, OK, I'm just going to, as we all do as entrepreneurs, you know, I'm going to create something. It's in my head. I'm going to put it to paper or to real life. And it was a 90 day thing going on podcasts and YouTube every day. And it's just going to be me and the camera and, and the friends out there in the wide world. And and I thought I had I honestly didn't know what I'm going to get myself into. And someone told me, um, you need guests on your <laughs> day challenge. And I'm thinking, OK, and you were one of those. And then it snowballed from there. I think you might. Uh, have Anyways. Uh, so yes, <laughs> it was wonderful. And I remember thinking, wow, 90 days, that's commitment. <laughs> it's insane. It's not. Look, OK, actually, this is an important point, Alison. So. I'll, I'll introduce myself in a second, yes, but please. this, this really, this 90 day challenge of going in head first is, is the analogy and the, the symbol of the problem that I want to talk about today, I would say, which is as people who are passionate about the work that we do uh, and the mission that we have, you know, for me, for you, it's about improving health and, and well-being, irrespective of who we're helping. And we do it in a number of ways. And those of us who are entrepreneurial I'm not just talking about for the business sake but we we love solving problems and creating new kind of solutions yeah um we go in there head first and yeah. we love it there's a honeymoon phase right and and that's what I did with the 90 day challenge and it's what I've been doing with everything else that I do I go in head first I'm all in it's really fun and then you hit a brick wall and you're thinking <laughs> what the heck did I do and finally you get through if you're persistent so it's it's all about I think the main message I want to share, before, and you've talked about me, so I don't want to go into more depth about me unless you ask. But no, please. It's, it's you know, it's it's all about um, being clear. Simplicity is clear, and clarity is so important. It's about clear what you want, and the way I do it is essentially as a public health or preventive medicine doctor. My number one goal is to help entrepreneurs, you know, including helping myself to create solutions that improve health and well-being, whether it's physical or mental health. And we do that day in, day out in our day jobs as, as physicians, helping health systems as a whole. But what I felt was missing were, were a couple of things. Number one, entrepreneurs are really now getting interested in the world of health. And many of the people that I love working with are entrepreneurs who've gone through a personal experience of their own, either with their own health, like you, right? With mm -hmm. our own health, I, me too. And it might be our own health or it might be a loved one or we, we may have just seen something in the world around us. And it kind of inspires us. And I, I always say it's like if it was any other time in our lives, we would have probably retrained and become a, a health coach now or a nurse or a doctor or something. But many people are now thinking about, you know, let's create a solution and be entrepreneurial or even as an entrepreneur in an organization. Let's do something that helps and solves the problem. So. 
I won't keep talking because I want to, uh, you know, let you speak too. But the, the gist of it and coming back to this 90 day challenge thing is whatever we do as entrepreneurs, whatever the goal is, it's irrespective of whether it's health or not. We always talk about whether we're solving the problem, number one. And we're always talking about whether our product is, you know, f- there's a product market fit. These are really critical things. But the third thing that we always often forget about as entrepreneurs is whether the venture as a whole, whether the mission is aligned with our with our own health and well-being and aligned mm-hmm. with the kind of life we want to live. And I'll end it there. I'll stop preaching. But essentially, that is critical for our own health and well-being and, and having a sustainable business. True. It's 100 percent like <clears throat> because when I had my brick and mortar uh, physical therapy and yoga clinic, the work was aligned and I loved the work. But uh, the actual business model wasn't aligned with my health. And that actually led to the breakdown of my health, which is why I pivoted. And now I'm doing work that's aligned and the business model is aligned. And so uh, I just see such d- dramatic changes. Yes, my health isn't perfect 100% of the time, but I'm a human being. Right. I have more space to, to care for it and to deal with it. And I'm seeing my family a lot more. I'm smiling a lot more. I, I like I get to do fun things like interviews like this. So it is so, so important uh, what you're describing. And I think there's something I want <clears throat> to touch upon because there's a lot of entrepreneurs, like some may be health coaches. And I think some yoga teachers, health coaches, practitioners, some of them consider themselves an op- entrepreneur and some of them don't. Mm-hmm. And, you know, what's the distinction there? The other thing that you brought up is for, you know, no matter what you consider yourself or label yourself is there's usually two ways that um, a practitioner or uh, an entrepreneur will approach their business. And one is diving in head first, like kind of like what you and I do, like I, <laughs> I do it and then I develop the systems later, right? Because right. I, I, you know, and I fail and I, and I fail forward. And then I'm like, Oh, that didn't work. So then I, you know, scrap it and try something else. And then I realized, okay, this was the system that got me here. And then the other way people go about it is developing the systems and the processes first, and then doing it. And I don't think there's one right way. But I do think like, jumping in head first does has it. um, And of course, we're biased because we do it that way, does have its benefits in the fact that we're not going to freeze and just sit there and create all the thought work and create all the systems and processes, but never actually show up to do the work, right? So you, with your 90 day challenge, probably learned a ton, but you, and you showed up and you did the work, you know, and and maybe in the future, it'll be like 90 days, geez, that was a lot, or it was a lot and there was benefit to it, you know, talk, talk a bit about that. I was watching Alison um, on, I think Amazon Prime, uh, uh, Steve Jobs and the Lost Interview, and that was a couple oh. of weeks ago. I watched it. And Catchy title. It's it was it literally it was a Lost Interview. I can't remember who it was that interviewed him. Uh, I think a famous producer director. And regardless, that the, one of the things that really hit home with me was he was Steve Jobs was was talking about how um, companies and startups uh, that come up with an idea, it's truly successful, it's revolutionary, either in the product itself or in the way they deliver a certain solution. And then they scale. And what they wanna do next after that is they wanna replicate that with other future products that come out, right? And and as they grow bigger, they bring on new members of their team and their focus is typically about what can we do to replicate the success? And so they create mm-hmm. these processes, these structures around them to replicate that. And what sure. he was saying, and I'm a fan of frameworks, I'm a fan of processes mm-hmm. and structures, but what Steve Jobs was saying was, you know, we are artists as innovators, as change yes. makers. We are artists. And in any other life before technology, before the internet and all that, we would have probably stuck to writing poetry or drawing or sculpting or that kind of stuff. But now mm-hmm. this is our new craft, essentially. Um, yeah. so I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but you know, it's creating something that solves problems. Sure, you can teach it through frameworks and structures. Sure, you can 
create the environment in an organization, however big, whether it's just you as a solopreneur or, or bigger, to be conducive to innovation. But at the end of the day, for me, what I've found that works is having a clear vision of who you want to help and what you want to help them achieve and obviously why it's important to you. And then going in head first and being passionate about it, about not the product you're creating, but about who you're helping and what you're helping them achieve. And again, it might be, you know, you might have got into it because it's an experience you've had. So think about how you would want to help yourself a few years ago. That's the bottom line. And I think it's okay to be passionate and crazy, really. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean that in a, a, a crazy way. <laughs> I mean, I seriously mean, <laughs> I teach frameworks all the time when I work with entrepreneurs, but but you've got to be passionate and, and clear on your vision. Otherwise, it's, you're not going to be creative. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. And you can't, and it's interesting because some frameworks will help one entrepreneur, like, and they skyrocket, and, and then the other entrepreneur will get stuck. And it's just not the right framework for their, you know, their brain, their artistic right. talents, their creativity, right. how they think. Um, so yeah, it is something that I work with when I help entrepreneurs too, is like, okay, it's good to have a foundation and a structure, but not too much where it causes them to like slow down and freeze and stop exactly. or become reliant on, on me or a process or a system instead of listening and becoming reliant on themselves, trusting themselves. Can I come back on that? Yes. So to build on that, and I absolutely agree with you, Alison, just to build on that, I want to kind of defend frameworks and tools and tricks yeah. and, and all that in a way. So tricks. just the other week I was <laughs> just the other week I was learning as I'm building my own things behind the scenes. You know, I, I as a medic, you know, no one teaches us about entrepreneurship. And when I say entrepreneurship, by the way, you asked this earlier. It's for me, it's not necessarily about being in business it's not necessarily about doing something for the sake of money you can be an entrepreneur mm -hmm. as a health professional you can be an entrepreneur in a charity a not for non-profit you know essentially for me and people will debate me on this but entrepreneurship for me is, is about the mindset it's about seeing problems and rather than complaining and having that victim mentality let's find people to build a team around us and create solutions and solve these mm -hmm. try anyway that's for me, entrepreneurship. And mm -hmm. um, we need more of it. There are enough problems out there and we need more of this. Um, so what I wanted to share is just one tool that I came across. So as I said, I haven't learned business anywhere. And I decided to do one of these MBA courses. Um, and one of the tools that they help you teach is a framework that allows and is conducive to innovation and creativity. Right. So yes. can I just share it just one moment? Please do. Yeah, it sounds probably, amazing. You probably, it's simple. You probably know this already, Alison, but it's called the value curve analysis. Do you know what I'm talking about there? Uh, go, no, I don't know if I know that. Go ahead. So, so as a, as a health, like public health uh, and researcher, I'm, I'm a bit of a nerd. So just be patient with me as I describe sure. this nerdy tool. Do it. Just imagine you've got a plot, a graph, right? Uh, uh -huh. I, I can almost see myself drawing this now. So on the, um, on the, x-axis at the uh -huh. bottom bottom mm -hmm. you, you've got to think about uh various so let's take a, a solution that you're interested in let's say the iphone or whatever let's talk about the smartphone um you're interested in certain features right as a customer as a client as a user of the iphone and there may uh -huh. be five ten however but think of the ones that you're interested in that are important to you to make that to use that and mm -hmm. then what you do on the um y-axis is you plot how good you are let's say a rating of zero to ten it's subjective and that's fine and what mm -hmm. you do is you create a curve for each one of these products that are out in the market that you're competing mm -hmm. so yeah so for example you score i don't know um uh memory as a feature and you score this product like the iphone as a 10 and then a samsung as whatever i'm not going to throw you know cause problems <laughs> with right, different right, brands right, right. Right. <laughs> and you essentially create different curves for different products and then uh -huh. there you kind of see where the peaks and the troughs are so uh -huh. even though this is a tool and it's a process and it's really organized way of doing it it visualizes uh -huh. where the gaps in the market are and you can see where sure. you can 
either eliminate some of those features that are not really important or uh -huh. really come in and really improve on those gaps. And yeah. so I just, I just want to- I love that. That's a uh, very, no, I love it. Uh, that's very big picture thinking too, because sometimes we come in and, you know, we want to help people, especially as like a solopreneur. And we have this one, one thing or this tool or this skill that we're like really good at. And so then we focus on that, but we don't take into the big picture, like, okay, where, where might this fit in the market? I think that's awesome. Um, and it's a great strategy and tool to use. And you've really got to think about this, you know, like, and mm -hmm. we don't need to dig deeper into this, but just briefly, you know, at the end of the day, as um, whatever you've got, whether it's a, a new app that you're using for a diet or a, a sleep tool or whatever, when mm -hmm. you're designing a new solution for, for that problem, you've got to, everyone comes in, entrepreneurs that I've seen or worked with, they all come in saying, oh, it's this, this new tool that's got technology left right and center and it's all snazzy you know at the end of the day it's got to be something fun to use it's got to be something easy to use so the focus shouldn't be on the technology under it that's got to be there without a doubt mm -hmm. but the focus should be on the user experience yes. and um and that's where the value curve analysis comes into play yeah i love that yeah. and um you know so as like for you as you help entrepreneurs and for me like i work a lot with a lot of solopreneurs, um, I bring that into the work 100% because sometimes as like the coach, the practitioner, the teacher, whatever, whatever name you want to use to describe yourself, we, we based again, because we might have learned this from our own experience, like we know what, what can work, what can, we have a process usually of what can work with like individual, individuality like variations. Um, and we want to sometimes impose that upon the user, the customer, when maybe they might not, they're not, they might not be ready to hear it that way or do it that way yet. And so I think the people that are really successful in getting their customers and clients results and having them be loyal and raving and talking about it, all the things that we want as entrepreneurs is to meet them where they're at and realize like their reality, their thinking, their thinking is their reality. So like you have to think about how, what you're teaching or how you're guiding them or your specific process is gonna fit into their life. So it becomes more of a lifestyle instead of like just another exercise to do or another class to go to or another app to pull up on the phone, right? It, it actually becomes something that they start to crave and enjoy and they notice when, when it's gone, when it's missing. Mm -hmm. I agree with you entirely, absolutely. <laughs> I could yeah. go on and on, but I'd rather give the mic Please back do. to you. No, no, because you no, know, no, no. I, you know what it's like being a podcast host. You're used to asking all the questions, and then you know. But I'm the guest today, so back to you. Yeah. It's all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I actually did a lot of solo. I did a lot of solo podcasts, so I'm happy nice. to bring you on. I want to hear more about. Tell us about the 90 day challenge. Like, what oh, was your your thoughts going into it? We heard a little bit about just diving in. What was your experience? Because people do want to lead lead challenges, and that is like the longer end of the spectrum of challenges. So maybe uh, walk us through that whole experience. Yeah. So. I let me just back up. I mean, it's sure. entre entrepreneur's doctor is about a year. I'm celebrating its first birthday very soon, Alison. And um, Congrats. thank you. Thank you. And I'm really glad to kind of be celebrating with you. And what I would say is the reason I, I started it is, as I said at the beginning, it's to help entrepreneurs who want to create a venture of any kind, whether it's for profit or not for profit, whether it's in e-commerce or whether it's in coaching or whether it's in Technology, health tech, it doesn't matter really. It's about how do you navigate the health system? How do you understand where the needs are and actually mm. create solutions that matter and that get adopted? Because most ventures, they fail, unfortunately. Now, backing up, I am by no means a business expert, but I am a, a health professional, you know, and I won't, you, you said what I did before, so I'm not going to repeat that. But this <laughs> is where the two worlds collide, which is sure. most 
most business training programs, most MBAs, you could go spend thousands in a university. They're fantastic. However, they miss the trick on a couple of things. And tell um, us, what's the trick? I will. And I want to tell you about the 90 day challenge as well. So basically, uh, when it comes to um, health, you know, most people, let me back up. When we talk about um, creating a solution for a problem, we often think about, okay, is this product or service, is it going to meet that? Is it going to solve the problem? Is it going to work? Is there a market for it? Is there a demand? Can it be scaled? All that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And usually as entrepreneurs, we've got into this, as I said at the beginning, in health, especially because we've been through a problem of our own. Mm-hmm. And we are so focused, we're super focused on the problem, we're super focused on the solution, potential solution that we forget a couple of things. And I'll just raise two of them. First mm-hmm. one being that it is a problem for you and it's a problem for so many other people out there. However, for those who want to pay, because in health, the person who pays isn't necessarily the person who uses what you're going to create. So that, depending on where in the world you are, it varies. But whoever's going to pay at the end of the day what are their problems? What, where mm. does the problem that you want to solve rank in all of their problems? And it gets even more complicated. To, and I won't go into depth, but you need a, a systems way of thinking about this. So that's one of the things mm-hmm. that I share with, with entrepreneurs. The other one is most of us focus on um, creating solutions in health that are really either focused on healthcare. So even mm-hmm. the coaching model is a kind of a, a clinical kind of way yeah, of being very much so yeah um whereas actually 80 or 90 percent of our health allison is outside health and care generally it's literally it's in the homes we live in it's in the cities we live in it's in the food we eat as you know it's our lifestyles which is about half of it but what determines our lifestyle isn't just this you know it's, mm-hmm. it's in addition to mindset it's so much more and that's where the public health and the wider social determinants of health comes into play And then the last thing I'll say on that before I talk about the challenge is we often focus on behaviors and lifestyles and and ways of living that are right about now as adults or, you know, when we're when we're getting the poor health outcomes that we want to try and avoid. Whereas many of these things have been lifelong, you know, many of the Mm -hmm. underlying issues may have been in childhood. Right. So if you want to create something, if let's say, God forbid, I mean, I know your story. I've been through my own problems and that's why I want to talk about the challenge. But mm-hmm. if, if you want to create a solution for, let's say, cancer, if you want to create a solution for heart disease, think of the life course approach. Think of things outside healthcare because that's where you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck. And I'll stop there. So I, let me answer mm-hmm. your question. The challenge- No, you is- should carry. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I honestly, like I, I, I'll stop talking, but briefly, the but challenge. Just ho- but hold on. What do you mean by beyond healthcare? Like specifically, sure. just like sure. big, big picture thinking. Big picture thinking. So, or give famous... us an example. Right. Okay. So, I personally, um, let's see. I was going to talk about asthma, which we can do in a sec, but let's talk about what led me to do the. the create the entrepreneur's doctor but also what led me to do the 90 day challenge so i've i've personally been through multiple health problems and i've looked after you know cared for loved ones who who died of cancer for example and these are the triggers that got me more you know um, mission driven if you like to do more of this kind of work and i'll give you an example of what I went through personally with weight gain and weight loss, right? We -hmm. often talk about um, it's your lifestyle, it's what you eat and so on. But there's so much more that goes into weight issues. And again, it's the life course perspective, but let's talk about beyond healthcare. When Mm -hmm. I say healthcare, again, it's, you know, it's that immediate thing of, okay, are you checking your blood pressure? Are you checking your sugar levels? Are you checking your stress levels? And But beyond healthcare, there's so much more. So whether it's physical or mental health or whether it's obesity, whether it's asthma, it doesn't matter. There's the determinants outside of health are are like this. You know, think of about 10% of it is you having access to a doctor or some form of clinician. That's 10% of what determines your health. About half Mm -hmm. of it's it's minimal, right? And that's where most of the money's going, unfortunately, Um, which is fine. But 
there's more we could be doing. About 50% of it is the way we live our life. So how much sleep we get, how much exercise we do, our lifestyle. And we know that, but there's so much more. So it's the environment. So for example, are you living in a community that you feel safe and able to go out for a walk? I've lived in the States and where I live here, there's a dangerous walk, a footpath right next to a you know, really high speed road that I don't mm. feel safe sending my son out. I don't feel safe walking there either. So, and there's other things like you, you could be living in a crime ridden place and you don't feel mm -hmm. safe. So do you live in a community that allows you to live that healthy lifestyle? Do you live in mm -hmm. a place where you can have access to healthy food? So your behaviors are informed by your environment. And then yeah. the last thing, there's so much more. It could be in your workplace. It could be in the, the food and the agriculture. It could be in the economy. We've seen it in the last 20 months, all these issues boiling up and being aggravated. How a single thing, we won't go into depth about that, but a single thing can impact all of life, right? From transport through to education. So it's the same. It's a two-way street of what determines our health as well. And the thing that I want to just add there is, is this cup analogy that I share with, I used to share when I was working clinically, and it kind of brings all of this into something tangible. So we're born with our genetics and that's like the, the, the strength of, of the cup, you know, that's what we're born with and we can't really change that. Well, we might in the future, but right now we I'm can't. I'm working change. on it. I am working on Are it, you? my friend. Yes. I want to hear it's totally outside the healthcare and it's a bit, it can be a little too out there and woo, but um it's a lot of mindset we'll just put it at that like i want to hear that know? i want to hear whenever you feel comfortable sharing uh -huh, but let's finish the let's finish the cup analogy <laughs> so that's your genes right and then mm -hmm. um you know as we're living our lives there's good and bad things being thrown into this cup right whether it's in the food we eat or the air that we breathe or indeed your mindset what's going in uh, whether it's good or bad and it's going to fill up and this is the, the kind of detox mentality. It's like, okay, there's holes in there that can drain the bad stuff out so that it doesn't overflow. And what I say in the cup analogy is essentially, if it keeps continuing to fill up this cup and you don't have the mechanisms to release the bad things and refill it with the good things, and indeed the cup is not strong, then at some point, not only is it going to overfill, and so sometimes we suppress the symptoms and put something on, then it's going to give way in the weak spots, right? Where, mm -hmm. So that's just an analogy. Um, and so this brings in all of these things, whether it's your genes, your environment, your food, your mindset. And so to rebuild that, you've really got to think, and I'd love to hear your thoughts, but the missing link there is what we call epigenetics, which is, yeah. you're right, your genetics are not predetermined. They are predetermined genetically, but your your environment and the way you live your life can change the way they're expressed and, and obviously okay, change. So yeah go on over to you have you read the book uh biology of belief by bruce lipton i haven't no so he's written a lot about epigenetics so um and i wanted to throw the book across the room <laughs> because i think epigenetics is in i just had this conversation the other day I think the work is powerful. And I think we need to take responsibility for our health and our lifestyle and help those, right? Um, it's not just an individualized thing as you're saying, because it's part, part society as well. And, um, but, so there's a lot that goes into that. And it's, you know, he talks a lot about, you know, genes being expressed, right? What turns them on or makes it, you like vulnerable or likelihood to turn them on and then he'll keep you know and then lifestyle food diet mindset stress all the things in combination with the gene being expressed or not you know that's my limited knowledge about this and then he keeps saying you know every few pages or so except those of you it's usually less than five percent of the population uh with a genetic mutation and i'm like <sighs> This work applies to us too, because I do think it does. And I think as there's more genetic profiling done in just our medical system, you know, systems right now, it's really just in its infancy. I've seen, I, I was tested uh, five, five years ago or so. And from the time I was first tested to I was tested again just um, last year, 
that it's changed dramatically. I think like, and so I think we're just at the beginning of this. And I think there'll be more people diagnosed with more genetic mutations as there's more screenings done. And so I think that number will increase. And so that's going to influence like really what epigenetics is and genetic mutations versus genes actually being expressed. And I, and I think that right now it's, it's just in the beginning phases, really. It is. It really I don't, is. I don't specialize and study that, but that's just all I know. <laughs> no, that's really good. I mean, I, I can't pretend to be a geneticist or an epigeneticist, but uh-huh. it definitely is intriguing. And we're, we're definitely in the early days. So watch this space. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, so, I, but essentially I, I like your cup analogy and that's actually what happened to me recently with my, uh, you know, as you know, I'm being monitored for, uh, cancers, just normal screenings, which I go to, and I do get triggered. So then I have to, you know, take the time to make sure I'm processing and, and not, you know, withholding the stress in my body. Uh, But at the same time, so I cancer was ruled out, but there was a GI issue. And so when I was talking with my naturopath, what she said was exactly what you said, like, because of my genetic makeup, I have this vulnerability. And essentially, there's a few factors that led to the cup not being able to hold. And it really is, you know, with our colon and whatnot, a pressure, pressure based system in some ways. So something had to give and it was this area of my colon. But it's created a wonderful um, awareness for me. And I've been really working with practitioners and working with, you know, my genetic mutation, uh, which, you know, science right now says I can't change. But I, you know, I like to leave a little sliver of light, a little sliver of hope, who knows what will happen in 50, 60 years, and I'm just going to continue doing the work and and focusing on the mindset. So that way I don't get stuck in the victim mentality of like, why me? I have no control over this. Like, you know, which will put me ironically at higher risk for cancer, right? Because then I'm stressed out. I'm, I'm, you know, worried and fussing about it all the time. Yeah. Amen to that. Absolutely. Uh, It's all mindset. It it really is all mindset at the end of the day. I, I was, you know, going back to this 90 day challenge, just as an example, you know, when I went through my, you know, as we're talking, so many things come to mind and and I was going to talk about burnout, but actually let me, let me give you a a really important example. That's been personal to me about mindset before talking about anything else. You know, we all, and I let's, you know, hopefully I won't get emotional as I'm speaking, but I was just Mm -hmm. reminiscing on, my dad, when he was, I mean, who hasn't got some form of uh, person that they look up to? And for me, that was, you know, my dad. And, and when he was diagnosed with um, like terminal cancer, there was no Mm. cure whatsoever. That was devastating. And, And I was thinking, how the heck did he stay so strong, you know, throughout, it was about 12 months of pain, really, it was painful. And you know, there's no hope in sight. I mean, there, there was really no hope in sight. Yeah, right. And he, and he didn't lose it. You know, I lo- almost uh-huh. lost it. Everyone else right. almost lost it. Yeah. And so it really is your mindset. And when you think about it, you know, that is what determines not only the, the way we perceive life around us and we perceive ourselves, but it also influences the actions that we take. And it's those actions that are going to lead to the outcomes that we want down the line. So So really, I think those outcomes may not always be cure of your cancer, but it may be a nice, nice transition to wherever the other life is, right? So, And I think that's an important conversation because sometimes, you know, we're human, we, we, it's an uncomfortable topic to talk about and it's emotional, but at the end of the day, you know, what's that saying? None of us get out of here alive. So I think it... (laughs) I think is I think it is important to talk about. And thank you so much for sharing that story. What can I say? Uh, 
Anyways, anyways, what, what, what should we talk about, about next? Ninety day ch- that, we got to <laughs> talk about that ninety day challenge. Now we've kept dropping the seed a bunch of times. No worries, so people no are probably like, just tell us about it. <laughs> Look, as I said, you know, I've been interested in what I do as a public health doctor, helping create uh, solutions, and then I always saw myself as an entrepreneur. And what happened was, you know, the entrepreneur, you know, is being an entrepreneur in an organization. And the challenge with that is, depending on where you work, they may not be able to give you the, the time, the allocated time to be entrepreneurial. And so if you're like me, and I think maybe a bit like you as well, which is you can't control yourself. If you see something, you want to do something that helps solve that problem. And then you take on too much and you like, crash into a wall right and so for me I've tried so many times being an entrepreneur and when it came to uh, about almost a year and a half ago I hit a wall because I was taking on too much I wasn't saying no and that's what's led me to say look I'm passionate about helping improve health and well-being of, of the population and I love doing that through entrepreneurial ways of working and helping others who want to do that so why not instead of like killing myself literally in, in, in a place that I'm working, why not split my day job with my passion uh, of, you know, being creative and keep that to the side as the entrepreneur's doctor. And I thought, okay, it's a bit too early to be sharing all of this, but then it came to the 90 day challenge. And, and I, and I thought, no, let's go all in and let's just mm-hmm. talk about my challenges with my own health, physical and mental and say how that's led me to, to actually create the entrepreneur's doctor and want to get into this world of, of health entrepreneurship. So that's what the 90 day challenge was all about. It was sharing my own journey, but then along the way, what happened was like a week into it, someone contacted me and said, this episode really hit home and I want to come and talk mm-hmm. to you. And I'm like, why don't you come and do it live with me on, on the episode? And that led to a snowball. I found you, I found others uh, through, mm-hmm. I think is it mindshare isn't it that someone introduced me to is it mindshare i might be i don't remember, I don't no. remember. <laughs> um regardless there was a group that they introduced me to all these entrepreneurs that have been through similar stories they've had a personal health issue and that's led them into the world of health entrepreneurship they may be an entrepreneur elsewhere and i thought wow you know let's share these stories and then I was going live almost every day for 90 days and towards the They're latter great half, story. it was insane, it was insane, yeah. but, <laughs> but towards the end anyway, I, I started talking about this perspective shift that we need because most of us as whether we're entrepreneurs or um, intrapreneurs, we, our ventures fail and there's, there's common reasons why they fail. And so I thought, let me introduce this, which we talked about, this perspective shift of how to actually enter and navigate the health system so that you try and avoid these pitfalls and that's what it was all about at the end of the day yeah well if they wanted to can, can they go see it if they if they wanted it's, to yeah. know it's uh, still up yeah i mean i think the best way to look at it is if you go to my website so um entrepreneurs dot doctor i think you'll have a okay, link i'll somewhere. drop it in the yeah i'll drop it yeah. in the show notes but yeah just speak it too because sometimes you know, <laughs> I think it, it's there in the resources section, or if you sign up for the, the seven day kind of launch pad, it's a free uh, uh, kind of tour of what I offer. Uh, mm-hmm. Essentially, I, I share the links to that, but it's all on YouTube or on, on your favorite podcast provider like Spotify. It's all there. Okay, great. Well, I'll send them to, I'll put the links in the show notes to, is it entrepreneurs.com you said? Entrepreneurs.doctor. <laughs> okay go. i see it right here entrepreneurs dot doctor and go. uh you can go uh get his freebie and then that will get you access to the 90 day challenge and if you can't find just hit reply and ask it's, him yeah, he's a nice yeah. man <laughs> happy to happy to yeah no. <laughs> right so awesome i love this talk i love the per- i love the systems perspective because I do think it is helpful to have that structure and systems. And I think it is super helpful, especially for, for the solopreneur to take a big picture, look at, at the market and see like, okay, where are like the gaps and the holes and, and how can, you know, what I'm offering kind of meet that. So then there's a higher likelihood of success for sure. Absolutely. Anything else you would like to add? I would, I'd love to. So for me, there's this concept that we talk about, which is um, 
in the world of health, which is called proportional. This is a technical term, but I'll share it anyway. And then say okay. What about. Proportional universalism. Have you ever heard of that, Alison? No. <laughs> so it's this kind of, I guess it's a public healthy kind of approach to, look, for me, end goal is improving health and well-being. That's the end goal. And so I want to be able to do that by reaching everyone and anyone who wants it. So that's why you get all this free stuff on, on YouTube. So you can find all the episodes there. But everyone in the world of business tells me you can't give everything away for free. So you've got to keep the lights on, right? And this is where I'm mm -hmm. helping myself as an entrepreneur. So what I, what I started doing was kind of offering this um, uh, perspective shift that people need and taking the systems approach to navigating the system when you want to launch your own uh, venture, whatever that may be. And I thought, let me just dish it out for free. And then someone told me, look, if you still want to do it for free, at least sell it and then give the money to charity. And I thought, okay, what led me to do this? It was my dad's experience with cancer. So here's what I did. I put it all into a mini book. You can read it in literally under an hour. It's a tiny book. Oh, and I put it on it. Amazon. I put it on mm -hmm. Amazon and it's also on my website. And any sales, I said, I, I don't want to get paid for that. I want to give that all to char so cancer charities to begin with. Awesome. And so I think more of us as entrepreneurs, you know, if we can focus on really adding value and actually helping people around us, that way perhaps we'll attract the people that we want to work with and that turns into business if that's really what you're looking for. It really depends what your goal is. Yeah, 100%. I, I say the same thing to some of the entrepreneurs I mentor because, you know, they're afraid to give give away a lot to, for free. There, there really is a fear for that or having too many free consults and you know, it's not like we're saying to be a, a martyr because you need you do need to protect your time and your energy. Uh, but at the same time, that's truthfully why I love like marketing because I have like free Facebook group, YouTube channel, newsletter, podcast where I give a ton of information and content away from free on a daily basis. And I'm okay with that because like, I feel like I'm serving the world and the community and those that want to work with me more will. And it's just natural that not everyone will. And that's, that's part of my Dharma is to put it out there, help others. And exactly what you're saying. Those that, that want more, they'll, they'll, they'll reach out. They'll be attracted to it and they'll raise their hand, you know? And I, Absolutely. so if you're listening and you're having a fear of this, take our advice. <laughs> It's okay. You can give your stuff away for free and you can charge. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Awesome. Well, it was lovely to share this conversation with you today. And uh, for sure, I will link them up in the show notes and hopefully we'll carry it on this conversation in future sessions. Love it. Thank you so much, Alison. Thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs>